<laughs> so five, five dollars. Dollars. We are back with another edition of Steady Dropping Dimes. I like to say real fellas having real conversations about sports. No made up commentary. No, no made up arguments or disagreements. We give you our real thoughts and opinions on what's going on. Mostly with Michigan athletics, but we branch out. It's a big sports, national sports topic or a couple of national sports topics that we were uh, going back and forth over during the uh, during the prep for the show. Moved it to tonight because, you know, when the Prince of Zamunda said he's he's not available, we got to We got to accommodate. Nah. I did. Did I say that? Did, did I say Devin? Did, they could have thought you were the Prince of Zamunda. Daniel, they could have thought I was the Princess of Moon. <laughs> Hit dogs but, hollering like a mug right now. He just ah. Oh, nah, BG got his own got money. Some garbage going. You always got some garbage going. <laughs> oh man, I didn't even say anything about DG. Mm-mm. But folks, <laughs> we are back with another episode of Steady Dropping Dimes, and so much to cover. We appreciate all of you coming with us live. This is a one-off. We aren't typically. We're going to be Wednesdays at six p.m. We're only doing Thursday this week because of uh, scheduling conflict. We had just moved the time slot to 6 o'clock. That will be the permanent time because the numbers have been through the roof. We had people uh, joining us left and right since we moved to that time slot. So when it's good, you keep it going, right? So that's what we're going to do. Uh, speaking of it being good, it's, it's good to be supported by great sponsors. Great sponsors like the presenting sponsor of Steady Dropping Dimes, our friends at Destination Ann Arbor, your tour guides to all things Ann Arbor. So whether you're visiting or you live here in Washtenaw County, the places to go, the places to stay, the places to eat, uh, the events coming to town, Destination Ann Arbor is your tour guide to all of those things. Of course, you can go to their website at annarbor.org. That is an easy way to uh to find out what's going on in washington county not just ann arbor i also pr- uh, provide for you a qr code a little bit later on in the show that you just scan it'll take you right to the site on your phone be sure to save it bookmark it whatever you got to do uh to make sure when you're around here like i said whether you live here or you're visiting here you always know where to go where to stay what to eat what to do with our friends at destination ann arbor but let's dive right in fellas a couple weeks ago we talked about the possibilities, actually a month ago, we talked about the possibilities with the basketball program that Ward Manuel was predisposed to giving Juwan an, another shot, giving him another year, provided he met certain criteria, right? We didn't just, I know I didn't just come out, and I'm pretty sure you fellas didn't either, and just say, oh, I just give him another year. Said there had to be some conditions. Clearly that was, from what I was hearing, the thought process that Ward entered that meeting with. And apparently not enough of those conditions were met. You know, I think he wanted to hear some uh, hear uh, about a number of issues that were facing the program and how those issues would be solved. And I think it was wound up mostly being a conversation about NIL. Wasn't going to cut it. And so I said at the time, the guy is Dusty May. That's the guy. He'll be number one on the list. Had a little inside intel at that point, knowing that Dusty had been put on on Michigan's radar well over a year before, going back to when Jawan was being courted by the Lakers and turned it down. One of your old coaches, Daniel, put Dusty on Ward's radar. Charles Ramsey, who was an assistant at Michigan, recruited you to Michigan, went over to be the Eastern Michigan head coach, and then wound up giving Dusty his first college coaching job. So he planted the seed with Ward cultivated a little bit once it started looking like Jawan was possibly going to be out. Then when Jawan was out, he was talking to both sides a lot and kind of helped get the ball rolling for Dusty May to Michigan. Yes, sir. Uh, big assist by Coach Ramsey, right? It's a, a big-time hire by Ward. I think it's a, given the current climate and where Michigan is, he's almost a perfect hire, right? It's going to fit the culture, fits the, 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 the Michigan – basketball family well so i think it's one of those things that as long as he has the support and uh, and everything necessary he'll he'll be successful here at michigan but like you said man the biggest sister coach ramsey man call him big charles now don't don't hey coach ramsey he he's he's one thing about coach ramsey man he's always been a big time recruiter right whether he was at cal whether he was at 
at Michigan at Eastern. He is a big time recruiter, and he was a big gave award a big time assist in this, in this moment as well. Right, and then he he started to really tap the shoulders of a lot of basketball people, uh, guys that you know uh, that who wore the uniform yeah. like you, Daniel, and I'm sure you appreciate this too, Devin, that he didn't just rely on the coaching or the search firm to give him a bunch of names and then go and interview just the guys in the search firm. Okay, he went and talked to Rob Palinka. Who was GM yep. with the Lakers and a former player? He talked to Terry Mills and Tim McCormick. He went current generation, talking to Tim Hardaway. And that's just a sampling of the people he talked to, up to and including John Beeline, who came in about Wednesday of that week. You know, Dusty said, Dusty shared a story. He said, you know, he, he didn't really know each other. He said, uh, Beeline had sat next to him in Indianapolis his first year at a FAU, and he was kind of imparting some words of wisdom. He was like, man, you don't know me, young fella. But then started to, started to tell him something. He's like, coach, I, but I know who you I are. You. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, I know who you are. Like, you're, I mean, it's like, I'm, uh, you, you're, you're a legend in this game. And so mm-hmm. it had extra weight when, when Beeline, you know, who was in Naples, drives over and spends time trying to help court him to Michigan. He had already made up his mind he was going to Michigan, he said, yeah. but that's certainly – put him at ease. And so I'm curious, you guys who played the game, you see a lot of ADs do it different, DG. They just, they ask their questions, they have their process, and they don't really incorporate the views of the people who played the sport, who wore the uniform. Hmm. And Ward didn't do that. This time. He actually brought some players into the equation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can appreciate it, and I think it's really smart. And, you know, Ward being a former player, he can read the room. He can understand that that's a big part of, of what happens here. You know what I mean? The, the support from – and I can't harp on this enough, man. The, the shift in Michigan football, obviously there was a lot of different things that happened to allow Michigan to go from that COVID season in, into a, a run that we haven't seen at the University of Michigan, at least in a very long time. But the allowance of former players to be around – and I, I remember uh, Chris Bryant texting me like, hey, we want to show the uh, team a video, you know, getting them pumped up for the game, right? Since send a video with some encouraging words, right? Kind of leaning into former players. I, I'm, I, I may be wrong, and people may disagree. That helped Michigan football, and it's a part of why I think they, you know, are on this run that they are on now. Uh, and it's not everything, but I think it is something. And and for Ward to understand that and and lean on people who, like you said, have bled and fought and wore the uniform. I think it's huge. I think it's huge for the, the alumni base. I think it's huge for every guy that's worn a uniform. And it makes you feel, yet again, a part of what Michigan sports is trying to do, which is be the greatest in the world, right? Obviously, as an academic institution, outstanding. And, and as an athletic institution, you want to match that and be the exact same. And, and for football, national champs, they are the best in the world. And, and for basketball, they have that opportunity as well. And now when basketball gets to that point, People are going to feel like they were a part of that, that that play for the university. And I think that's huge and very important. Yeah, and so, uh, and then he, obviously, he brings Beeline into the equation. Uh, a lot of praise for for his present Ward offered it. Certainly a lot of the fans did as well. And Dusty went so far as to say, if he wants to roll moving forward, I, I, I'm open to it. Uh, and so I imagine he will be involved in, in some capacity. I know there was some talk about having him be a part of the uh, the donor engagement uh, process, which I think is a big, big deal. When you talk about what can be different, and, and, and this, I think, is an understanding that evolved for football. From It evolved over time with Harbaugh. I kind of talked about this before. He was like, you know, yeah, I engage donors, but I ain't trying to have trying to have me up in practice all, yeah. all, all, all the time. But that's that's part of it, right? That's part of the, the schmoozing part of it. And I think he, he warmed up to you got to travel the country. You got to rub shoulders and that kind of thing. Sharon jumped in feet first with that. This was an understanding from Dusty from Jump. Mm-hmm. And in the press conference, they asked him about NIL. He said, I figure 25 to 30% of my time is going to be spent, you know, NIL engagement, donor engagement. Like, hey, this is what you got to do. You got to hustle, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and didn't wait, fellas. So I'm talking to Dusty because, you know, I was in the back of the room, didn't see him. Uh, didn't We didn't make eye contact. Then... When it was over and I saw him, I was like, oh, 
man. Like, it's been a long time because he had messaged me the night before. I hadn't seen Dusty in like tw- like face to face in 20 years. So it was like, it felt like old times. And as soon as we were done, sort of exchanging pleasantries, and he did say, Dusty did say he's going to come in studio. So we'll be bringing that to you as well. Um, Man, he started talking to a donor right there in the press conference. Like, <laughs> talking to him about, let's get this NIL thing. Let's get it going. Kind of realizing that that's, you got to do that. It's not just what the school brings to the equation. It's not just donors just saying, we love Michigan basketball, so we're going to give money. You actually got to go hustle those dollars up. And Dusty seems to understand that right now, Dane. Yes, sir. That's And that's big time. He's hitting the, he sounds like he's hitting the ground running. And that's one thing, you know, as a head coach at Michigan, you have to come in ready to, to get in the fight. I, I hear Devin always talk about getting the fight with quarterbacks, stepping up in the pocket. Right now, Dusty's stepping into that NIL pocket and, and maneuvering and making things happen, man. It's I, I'm 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 excited to see what what the, the fruits of it, right? Hopefully, we can get some big time players in here and he can rebuild the roster in such a way that you know we'll be competing for national championships. Like that's the goal, I think, of every Michigan sport, right? Not just Big Ten championships, but making Final Fours and compete for national championships. So. Hey man, I'm I'm excited to see where it goes from here. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty good. Yeah, I, I think he he relates well to players. Uh, mm. I think the the donors are gonna love him. Fans are gonna love him. Media. I, uh, he was listening to my man Craig Ross on the M Go Blog Roundtable. He said some of the media he was talking to, they just didn't. Juwan, they didn't. He didn't talk to him very much, and they didn't like that. I was like, man, that don't even that don't even matter. Like that that's not a part of the job description, right? Uh, but but. It, you know, from the standpoint of of coverage and and deference or benefit of the doubt in 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 times where that's applicable, I think he he'll kind of get that. He'll kind of get that from from the media. But when it comes to some of the comparisons that were made, this is what I want to get to you you with now, Daniel. I, I think that you can really see some parallels. I've made some parallels with Sharon with how. They kind of he's kind of jumped into the NIL space, you know, and is engaging donors in that way. Uh, he certainly has said he followed Beeline uh, during his time at West Virginia and followed some of those teams. Uh, and, and of course, he was in on the pitch at the end. But that's about where the connection kind of stops. I think a lot of people are trying to make it out to be uh, schematically or strategically similar. And I know you watched a lot of film and you said that's not the case. No, not really. Uh, John Coach Beeline's system is is very unique. First of all, let's start there. Like, it's first of all, it'll be hard for any other coach to replicate a mimicking system. He runs. Uh, I know he runs elements of the Princeton. He runs elements of dribble drive. Coach Beeline's system is very unique. So, I, I it would it would be it would benefit all of us Michigan fans if we stop you know trying to make comparisons between the two, right? Coach, Coach May's offense, just from what from what, what I've watched this year, is more of a four out, one in motion type offense where they they have they don't necessarily have X and no structure, but more principles, right? We're gonna if you're on the weak side, you interchange. If you hear, you do this. But one thing they also utilize a lot of sprint ball screens. So if they hit the post, the big man, he doesn't have a one on one opportunity or an opportunity to go score. He's gonna pitch it out and sprint directly to a ball screen. And so they they rely a lot of uh, uh, high and side ball screens. And when they do run quick hitters, Coach May does a great job of manipulating, uh, I can, without getting too nerdy, uh, weak side defenders, right? Or as they call it these days, hole help. Like the guy that's in the hole helping on the roll or helping on the, the drive. Coach May's, his, uh, most of his quick hitters do a good job of removing that guy out of the play almost. And that's why you see you see a lot of guys, his big man get a lot of lobs at the rim, a lot of finishes at the rim. Guards get a lot of free drives because as they lift, these guys are coming off ball screens, coming off different actions and getting able to get to their spot. So it when it's ex when it's when they're moving and they're flying and they're executing, it's fun to watch. Like you saw them run to the final four, you saw most of this year. But it also has its drawbacks as well. You you definitely need in this conference, you're gonna need high end talent, you know, and, and I think. Just from what I've learned about Coach May talking to other people, he'll be able to construct his system in such a way that fits whatever talent he has in the building. From out here, he's a very sharp guy. He's a very knowledgeable coach. So I don't want to assume he's going to come to Michigan and run the exact same thing he ran at FAU, right? I think he's a very adaptable coach. And 
I think most great coaches are. So that's that's one thing I'm anxious to see what what exactly he's going to do at Michigan. Yeah, time will certainly tell. And he said, you know, what he's going to do is going to be, to your point, is going to be dependent upon the players he has. Yes. He doesn't, he doesn't know what, what the talent on the roster is going to be. He doesn't know what their strengths are. But he fancies himself as a coach who is going to play to whatever the strengths of his team is, what his team happens to be in a given year. So uh, you're right. John Beeline, very much uh, you know, what he used to say is a, uh, as he tried to dumb it down. He says a lot of read and react to what they do. Mm-hmm. You know, that is, as far as the, the, the sets that they have, really hard to prepare for because it's based on how the defense is playing them. Yeah. They got what their their player, his players have different movements based off of how the defense is, is defending them. And that's why I always was really hard to 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 defend. But when they face better teams, what he started to see is hey, hey man, the better teams could blow up the, the first set, could blow up the second set, mm-hmm. could blow them up. And so now when you get better players and get better talent, now okay, yeah, we're gonna go for it, we're gonna spread you out play some ISO and let our guys go to work. And so he wound up being a, a nice mesh yep. or meld from the structure uh, of all of his sets to the freedom of guys who could just go get you a bucket. And I mm. wonder if we'll see a similar kind of evolution for, for Dusty. I think that's why it's, it's great advice to kind of that you just gave Daniel. Let's, let's wait to see what, how it's going to unfold as he's able to get even better talent. At Michigan, yep. he was able to get at FAU. Hey, Sam, w- what's the young kid's name from uh, – well, he's not young anymore. He's a, I think he's a senior now from the Grand Rapids kid that's committed to Michigan, the basketball Durrell player. Brooks, Durrell Brooks, Fat Fat, yeah. Yeah, Fat Fat. So I've watched him play. And I'm talking about the tenacity and athletic ability, all those different things. And for Daniel, Daniel do you do you see him – obviously he's going to adapt to town, but is he like kind of the guy you want to start to build around just because of his tenacity? You're talking about how – hard the FAU teams play is he somebody that Dusty is like hey we got to make sure we keep him uh from in the state for sure I can I don't want to speak directly for Dusty but if I'm Dusty he's a kid that I want to keep mm-hmm. I want to get him I want to bring in the Trey McKinney kid there's mm-hmm. a like you want to get Trey those McKinney, man Woo. you want to get those in-state kids that can ball because they're going to be the like the lifeblood this is Michigan after all like it's not this is not Ohio. This is not whatever. This is Michigan. So you want to get those kids from Detroit and Grand Rapids, Flint, say that 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 fit the the the, the mold that you're looking for, and bring them in and develop them. They're gonna be. They're the ones that gonna. And let's be honest, kids from Michigan represent the University of Michigan a little different than everyone else because it's in them. It's their home state. Mm-hmm. So you want guys like that on your roster and build your program around guys like that. So that's good. Those guys are. are I really like both of their games, man. Trey, no, Trey McKinney, play. man, well, he, he put on a show in that state championship game. And, and watching him play, it's like he's never overwhelmed, always in complete control. And, and, it, and it, at a point, I was looking like, wait, does he have that dog, though? Like, is it because he's just always under control? And then yeah. to see what he did in the state championship, uh, I, 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 he got that dog. <laughs> he is a guy that you can lean on and build your program on, in my opinion. Yeah. Get him in a strength program, improve his explosiveness. I mean, he he looked like, like a great. grown man already, but imagine yeah. when he actually gets in a strength program. Uh, man. No, those, those are good, those are definitely great kids to build around. I hope hopefully they'll, you know, still some work to do to keep him in the fold, but hopefully it'll yeah. remain blue. Yeah. Yeah, he had fat fat on campus uh for a visit days ago. He was one of the guys that he reached out to immediately. Uh, to make sure that everything was still straight. Mm-hmm. So uh, he's, a, to me, he he's the kind of attitude. You, you said tenacity. He's the kind of attitude that you want on yep. the roster. Mm-hmm. You, you want that kind of presence, that kind of dog mentality on your roster. And the guy who is, is going to mean something, too, because he's an in-state kid, uh, he's obviously connected uh, to, to to the other in-state guys, to Trey, to Darius A. Cuff, who's down at down at IMG, mm-hmm. you know who knows? Forgot maybe that, that could that could lead. Yeah, maybe that could lead to something. You know, that's something that we talked to him about when he committed. He said, "I know those guys. It'd be great for us to all play together." It's not a conversation that they have had ongoing, but uh, it is something that if you're an in-state guy, you like to see more so with 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 uh, with A. Cup or Cheeks, as they call him, and then and then Trey McKinney. You know, those are those are two guys who it's not an active conversation. But I was talking to Trey's dad the other day, 
He said it's more me and Trey and more me and Darius's dad kind of talking about it than it is the the two the boys boys yeah. talking about it. But man, uh, said he's gonna give Jawan. I mean, give uh, Dusty a chance. They love Jawan, uh, but Dusty, that was the first call he made was mm. to Trey McKinney. Trey McKinney's dad, anyway. It's like want to let you know he's he's a priority. We're coming for him. We want to be in the program. And so his dad, John, was like, hey, he's going to get the opportunity. We love we love Juwan, but this kid grew up in a Michigan family. Both of his grandparents are Michigan graduates, as I've told you guys yeah. before. He's going to get an opportunity, Dusty is, to try, to try to grow that and make it so Michigan is the place for him. Won't be narrowing down his list for another couple of months. So we'll have to monitor that and see how it goes. In the meantime, in between time, kind of figuring out this, this transfer portal piece there's some there's some guys, whether it's FAU guys who hit the portal, which I'm sure he'll be looking at, or guys, you talk about guys from right here in, in, in the state. So okay. Connor Asija, what did you think of Connor Asija over at, at Wisconsin? He's in the portal, lifelong Michigan fan, you know, hit Michigan for 23 as a freshman, but playing time fell off as a sophomore. I don't know if that's just by AJ Store showing up on the scene or what. But his minutes took a huge dip. And so he said, I'm going to dip <laughs> and hit the portal. <laughs> and now he's available. He's not a world beater. But that's a guy who would love to be at Michigan, I would think. Definitely. He'll be a good rotational piece. You know what I mean? He might come in and find it. He might come in and be that guy we saw score 23, you know what I'm saying, that game. And might, you know, who knows, like a, 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 a fresh start could be like a breath of fresh air for him. So he could come to Michigan and, and rebuild and rebuild his career, rebuild his, 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 his prospects for his future and, and give Michigan another live body in the rotation. So it's, it's, I think it'll work for both parties. If, if that's the case, I also like the kid from Oakland. Yeah, man. That's another yeah. one. You bring him yeah. in the fold, you get these, now you're cooking with gas. You're bringing in guys like that, Sam, that can come in and play and have, has experience and size and like, you need guys like that, man. Yeah, you're talking about Trey Townsend. Yeah, very, very versatile. He's going to bang on the inside. Shot the three better in the tournament than uh, than they said he was capable of. He hit some big threes. Uh, I want to say against Kentucky. I know he hit one or two against uh, North Carolina State. Uh, game I felt like they should have won, man. I felt like they should have won. Uh, they were right there. But that's a kid. See, now this kind of fits in the wheelhouse. This is another thing that stuck out to me with Dusty. They asked Dusty about – they give you – any assurances about uh you know nil and, and missions and he said yeah they they said they're gonna they're stepping up nil wise we're gonna continue to make some progress but he with admissions he was kind of like man it is what it is we got to adapt to admissions so i don't know where people were getting this 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 idea this notion that they were going to change admission standards to accommodate mm -hmm. athletics that's not gonna I've happen. not heard that's something that's going to i mean hey. going back to when i was playing remember demar dorsey yeah, man. <laughs> man, we, um, uh, all our lives could be a little different if DeMar Dorsey came to Michigan, man. That boy, man, I, you know what? I'm not going to talk about it. I don't even want to talk about it. Nope. Nah, hey, Sam, it's one of those things like, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Erica Sanders. She's like the uh, dean of uh, head uh -huh. of admissions, right? She, she's uh, Mr. Spencer's, the, the great Ted Spencer's protege. Like, Mm -hmm. Ted Spencer, he's always involved. I know when I came on my visit, he was involved in my recruitment. He's from Dang. Memphis. Legend, right? And so she's his protege. Like, they have a high academic standard, not only for the regular students, but the athletes that come to this campus as well. So anyone, so all of you all that's listening and watching this podcast, if you are expecting the admissions department to lighten up or lower the standards for any student that comes to the University of Michigan, you're wrong. You're going to be waiting a very long time for that. You, you'll be waiting forever. Unless, unless LeBron James is going back somehow, <laughs> we're going to have to let him in. I'm sorry. That's the only way. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Hey, listen. It, Santa Ono would have – that would be a – set. that's not something – this is how you know some of the people who uh, were talking about this were talking out there behind when they said he was – made certain promises. Man, Santa Ono didn't talk to – didn't talk to Dusty until after he was hired, <laughs> right? <laughs> so who who was making these promises? War can't make that promise. He can't pro he can't make a promises about admissions. So that's how you know it didn't happen, right? I mean, it and Dusty kind of said as much during the during the thing, like you know you got to adapt to that. It's a high 
uh, academic institution. And, and really what it boils down to more than the admission standards, it's about the credits that transfer. That's, that's the, the, the big issue here. That was the, the hold back with a lot of these, they, you know, it, biggest example was, was Terrence Shannon. He's like five or six credits from graduating or so whatever it was. And they're like, man, you're going to lose 30 credits. What? 30? Man, hell no. I'm not losing all them credits. It's because we can't work something out. And they're like, no, no, no allowances on that. So that's why you deal with underclassmen, mm -hmm. freshmen, sophomores. So all of their credits provided the classes transfer and the grades are good enough. They'll be able to get all their credits and transfer and grad transfers. Just so happens the Connor Siege is coming off his sophomore year. That works. Trey Townsend is a grad. That works, right? So that's that's why as you look at some of these scenarios, that really that would really make sense. And that's the lane that I think coming in the door, Dusty knows he's gonna have to swim in because otherwise Juwan might still be a player. I mean, if he has, imagine if he just got the guys that couldn't get through admissions. If he got no Joe, you know Joe Easter, not as much. I, I really didn't see that he might have helped defensively, but I didn't really see him as a guy that was gonna move the meter a ton. Mm -hmm. But Terrence Shannon would have moved the meter. Yeah. Caleb Love would have moved the meter, right? Both those dudes rolling. <laughs> Both those dudes getting it in, man. You know, in the Sweet 16. Ray J. Dennis should have been in. I mean, it wasn't his fault. Yeah. That there, he, I think he had 27 against Clemson. So he did his thing. He did his part. And it, it, Dwyer had commitments from all those guys, which is probably what he was talking about in the, yeah. in, in the deal there, in the, uh, in the 101. And I think Ward's probably comeback was probably listen, but that's how it's gonna be. Yeah, this is how admissions that's not gonna change. What are we gonna do to adapt to that? And I think you're hearing from Dusty coming in the door, he already has a plan for how to adapt to that. And, and Sam, I think, and I don't know this to be a fact, but sometimes I think when you like when you have confidence in your ability to bring kids in, right? I think when you look at their transcripts, you can see like, hey. This guy's not wow, that's crazy. You like this guy's not gonna he there's no way he's gonna get into Michigan when you look at his transcripts, but you might think that you can go and work something out or something. Like you said, somebody may look pull a favor for it, like, but not here, right? So I think with Dusty, he's gonna have to that's a that's a change. I, I'm not saying he doesn't do that already, but they're gonna have to the way those uh new football coach uh vetting process is is gonna have to be a similar vetting process for for transcripts and grad transfers, because like you said, man, you have to be in a special special standing to get in, whether you're a young guy or a grad transfer. So that eliminates a lot of guys. What did y'all think of what he said about, I mean, I, listen, I know coaches, <laughs> they come in and they ready to hit the ground running and compete right now, but most of them would say, coming off a team who won eight games and the entire roster is basically flipped, they'd be like, hey, man, it's going to take some time to get this rolling. Devin Dusty was like, hey, I, basically, I don't have the exact quote in front of me, but he was basically like, I don't believe in rebuilding years. We're going to compete right now. And I'm like, man, he don't even, he don't even have no players. He's like, hey, we about to compete right now. I mean, it, it's because of what you can do in the transfer portal. It's because yeah. of what you can do with, you know, NIL. And, and obviously, he's a confident guy that believes in his skill set as a coach and a developer of players, right? I mean, we heard the same type of uh, – I want to, I mean, I guess you could say arrogance, right? But I, I like to call it confidence, right? From from Deion Sanders and and Lincoln Riley at USC. Like, we don't, this is not, this is not 1995. This is not even 2012 when I was in college. You don't have to wait and develop. Hey, man, go get that guy that can play. Hey, he's played a lot of ball. He maybe wasn't good enough when he was coming out of high school, but he's good enough now. He can help us. And then you put that together and you develop that group. And that's how you find a way to get, Hey, now we can get the recruits and develop that way the old-fashioned way. But right now, you can just go poach guys from different rosters. I mean, it, especially guys that are talented that look at Michigan and hold it at such a high standard and the education and all that. Ooh. A lot of guys are thinking, or at least I would be thinking, hmm, Michigan won eight games last year. I was really good at XYZ school. I can go get a Michigan degree and get that kind of fan base and that kind of that kind of um, alumni base on my side, and I'm probably going to play because they only won eight games. <laughs> I don't, I, that looks attractive to me. I'm just saying. Uh, Michigan, the football team won that championship, so you know the enrollment. 
you know, you know, if you care about, you know, beautiful ladies at the school and all that kind of stuff, you're going to get more enrollment because you got a, a national championship football team. I mean, it just looks like on the up and up if, if I'm, you know, building a team at Michigan. And so let's talk about what, what staffing <laughs> might look like, Daniel, because I know you have some thoughts on what it might look like with other candidates like like Jerome Tang. I think there's a good chance, especially with the with FAU deciding to go outside of the FAU tree, which I know, Ooh. you know, you, you wonder if it plays out differently, if, if Dusty has a chance to prepare them for his impending departure, whether they would have reacted there. I don't know if that had anything to do with the price of tea in China. I have no idea. I just know it leaked before he was ready. Mm. Like they, they had the meeting at 530. Uh, they had the handshake agreement, him and Ward at the end of the meeting. And so there was no, they hadn't really hammered out the details or the numbers. Uh, and so that's when his agent kind of went to work and the deal was, was consummated at like 915 or so. And it was out. I mean, like as soon as the deal was signed, Woj had it on ESPN and, and Dusty had wanted to, he had wanted to inform the team himself. Like you heard yeah. him say in the, in the interview, he was like, then it leaked. Like he wasn't ready for it to be out yet because he wanted to tell the team, tell the university himself. Again, I don't know if that affects things, but he, I know he was trying to work it. So his guy, one of his guys could, could get that job. They decided to go outside. I think it's re realistic. Uh, it's probably a realistic expectation that he he'll bring at least yeah. a guy he's familiar working with to the equation with them. But beyond that, Daniel, I mean, you know, so much of the conversation has been about Beeline and the connection to Beeline and what role Beeline would have. I wonder if a if if a uh, you know a, a connected question and one that is just as relevant, maybe even more so is what role might Beeline's assistants have in this equation? It's not like I think he'll go out and raid all the Beeline's guys, but you think about the names that are out there. Mm -hmm. You got LaBelle Jordan, who is a, who when coached at UW-Milwaukee, so mid-major, and then high-major experience with Butler and the Big East, Big East. So he was able to do that. He was part of the build at Michigan under Beeline, the transition – from the there was a 2010 transition under Beeline, and really, the the metamorphosis he had a key role in that could really recruit. Too, uh, you got Sadi who's here, who was part of the second build with Beeline, in in the run back at mid major experience at Oakland. You know, has recruited the area well for a long time. Luke Yaklich, who came in, brought you some defensive, uh, some defensive acumen and presence. That he uh, that he carried with him to Texas, and then as an assistant under Shaka, and then went over to UIC to be a head coach, and was recently let go. He's out there, and then Billy Donlin, like Billy. I man, when I look at what Clemson did to to Baylor, and I think Clemson, I mean, a uh, Baylor is a, a good offensive team, and Daniel, I think they shot like thirty seven percent from the field. I was like, oh, that's Billy, <laughs> that's that's Billy all the way. So to me, I'm looking around at that familiarity with Michigan and how things have gone here over the years, guys who are part of success, I would feel like, man, especially if you ask John Beeline, I think John Beeline would recommend going to get one of those guys. Yeah, let that go, Sam. That's not how coaching works, <laughs> especially not in basketball. Let that go. Like those guys, are, I'm pretty sure they'll bounce back and have strong careers somewhere. But if he, if Dusty doesn't bring his, his staff with him from FAU, He's going to conduct national searches, nationals to fill each one of those positions. He's going to fill it with the best coach possible. If that ends up being a beeline assistant, that's a beeline assistant. If not, like we got to let this, we got to let this go, Sam. It's it's 2024. We got to stop. Like the one thing we can at Michigan, we have a tendency to do is link coaches with each other or link ear. Like, no, this is Dusty Mays time, Dusty Mays era. Whoever provides input provides input, but he's going to build his staff the way he sees fit. And most of the time, for what I know about the coaching industry. They they hire guys that they have relationships with already, and if he doesn't have relationships with those guys, it's going to be hard for them to get up, get get in on his staff. Well, I it's know. Sorry, Daniel. Sam just don't like Frozen. He don't understand. Oh, he don't okay. understand. Well, let it go. I can I can get you. I know. I know. <laughs> so two things. I know that. Uh, I know that he 
was recommend. I know that he got a glowing recommendation from Val to Ward. I know that. Mm-hmm. I know that I know that uh, the Northwestern scout. Uh, I know he had a little inside intel from Saudi on that. Mm-hmm. Right. So there's some good. There's some. There's some I'm giving you some. some yeah, that's no, That's I'm normal in the business. Sure. I'm that's normal sure. business. Those guys. I'm saying there's some familiarity. Not yeah, that's familiarity. And those, I'm not saying they. I wouldn't. I wouldn't interview those guys. I wouldn't give them opportunities to stay. I would. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that most of the time, the way that the coaching business works, he's he's not going to leave his. For one, he's not going to leave his guys at FAU hanging. Right. That's right. right. He's not going to do that. that. Second, and then second of all, if he does have a chance to replace one or two of them, I'm pretty sure he's going to, you know, shake all the trees he possibly can to fill that job. Not just oh, this guy was a beeline assistant. So. I think uh, now for like staff people like Lisa Nicholson and Chris Hunter and guys like people like that, I think they, for continuity purposes, I think those are the more people I would kind of look to keep around because those are people that, you know, they're not really directly involved in what you do on a day-to-day basis on the basketball court. But as far as in the gym, on the court, the guys are going to be coaching with me. I'm probably going to, he's probably going to stick with guys that, like you say, he's already already with him at FAU or guys he has relations, like real relationships with already. So, Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Uh, I can't say enough how important that's going to be for as you look at all the things that he brings to the table, Daniel and Devin, and you guys can speak to this having played and having seen situations where the staff was largely a part of the downfall of the coach, right? So you remember when you first got? I mean, it was it was, when when TA got the job. It was it was Coach <laughs> Ramsey, it was Billy Schmidt, yeah, and then it was Swin, yeah, right. Billy Schmidt could get down. Hey, he Billy was Schmidt a, was the truth. <laughs> he was the truth, right? Yes, sir. And when Billy left, it's like I mean, you didn't really you didn't really replace him with a comparable coach or no, recruiter and so you wound up leaving your staff in a deficit i love swin i love andy Moore. i love those dudes right but swin wasn't that he wasn't at the age where he was recruiting nah. anymore nah, right he was, he was rarely at practice <laughs> so, and then and then you look at you look at, at at brady you know i think he was pressured to move al out i don't think al wound up being an issue uh, you get Nuss in, but it's the first year of Nuss. You really need to make some changes to shore that defense up, and he didn't. And I remember talking to to Brady before he got fired, and he said, I sat in his office, man, and he asked me, he said, what you think they're going to do? I said, man, I think they're going to fire you. And he said, no, nah. I said, I think this, I think this AD, I think he gets it. You know, I think he, I'm, I got some bunch of changes I'm going to make, and they were all on defense. But it was too late. It was too late. The, the the decision had already been made. Say, hey, man, it's it, it's time to it's time to move on. It's time to let you let your next move be your best move, so to speak, right? And so now Saudi, you know, Saudi, I, I I just saw in the chat, Sam, somebody mentioned Saudi. I that slipped my mind when I mentioned Chris Hunter and Lisa. Saudi would be one of the sisters that I would probably look into keeping around. Great recruiter, great guy. Great basketball of mine, so I, he's one of the guys I would definitely, as far as former coach Beeline and guy, he's he has that kind of like Chris Hunter. These are guys who've been basically for the last ten decade or so been part of the furniture at Michigan with Michigan basketball. Well, I gave you guys examples of of coaches who it didn't work out for, and you can kind of point to some staff decisions. You yeah. can do the same thing with coaches it did work out for, yes, and sir. point to their staff decisions. Jim Harbaugh after the 2020 season remade his staff, man. I mean, sweeping changes, sweeping changes. John Beeline changed every assistant. He changed everyone. You know, it, it was the only assistant that was staying over after 2010 was Mike Jack. And remember, Mike Jack yeah. left to go to Purdue. Yeah. That yeah. move. And I remember, man, I, I remember being thrown for a loop. You know, Beeline was thrown for a loop. Fortunately, he had interviewed. Uh, he had interviewed B.A. and Val, and B.A. barely beat out Val, ironically, because B.A. was really cool with, with Mike Jack. Yeah. And so he came heavily recommended, and that's how Val finished second. Well, when B- when Mike Jack leaves, now you just slide Val right in, and then he promoted Jeff Meyer, who had been like the fourth assistant 
yeah. uh, uh, before that. But that was a whole new staff. And that is to this day one of the best staffs I've ever seen in any sport yeah. on any team for how well they worked together, how well they complimented Beeline, how much the Beeline was comfortable with deferring to them. That's mm -hmm. a that was a huge deal for both of those coaches that it was the springboard for them to be kind of middle of the road, maybe being on yeah. the brink, to all of a sudden they're competing for championships. Yeah, not for sure. Uh first of all, Mike Jack is the truth too. Those are two guys like once, like you said, once Billy Smith left, it was kind of a void there as far as guard development and guard play, guard focus, right? Until Coach Amaker brought in Mike Jack. And Mike Jack kind of, especially after my junior year, man, he was a big, a big, big part of my my bounce back year as a senior and, and coming back and having a really good year. So I got a lot of love and respect for Mike Jack. So, like you said, that staff with him and those guys that you're right, that was incredible. I think all those guys went on to be head coaches, right? Yeah, so that that just goes to show you that's that's when when you can look back and say my entire staff went on to be head coaches. That's a hell of a staff. Yeah, sure is, sure is. So and like I said, you know, you lived it, you lived it, uh, DG. You know what it is when the, the staff. I've heard coaches say that's the most important thing you can do is recruit the best staff because if you don't do that, and mm -hmm. it's gonna if be a you don't do that. Team. I'm gonna get sacked eight times. For sure. <laughs> I'm kidding. Hey, uh, somebody in the chat uh, was wondering where is Bakari Alexander? Uh, Sam, let him know. You know, he, yeah, he's over he, he superintendent in River Rouge. Yeah, he's on River Rouge in, admin yeah. in, in administration. Yeah, over there. You know, I, I got my opinions on what happened to BA at UAD. We won't get into into that. Mm -hmm. I just think there. I, I think you live in the world of backstabbers. Remember that song, the backstabbers, they smile in Can't your face. Can't have them <laughs> oh, smiling in your face all the time. They want to take your place. That's what happened to B.A. <laughs> That's what happened to B.A. So I won't say nothing more. I don't want to bring up, you know, I don't want to cause no, no strife in the city. Mm -mm. You know, I want no smoke in the atmosphere. But, yeah. Still got to uh, be able to go and thanks to the city league, Sam. <laughs> when they still playing at the Saint, I don't even no, think they play at the Saint no more. I mean, I'll people be, still play there, but it ain't as you know how it used yeah. to be. <laughs> yeah, so no, nah, that staff was was amazing, and I hope I hope that Dusty puts together a staff like that. I mean, staff chemistry. We can talk about. I'll get into this with, with football because I think it's a big part of the thought process. You know, as we talk about spring ball, well, I'm going to talk about the the defensive line coaching search. Uh, because a lot of people are asking me questions about that, is more questions about that than what's going on in spring ball, right? It's like, who are they going to get as a D-line coach? I, I, I think I got a feel for who it's going to be. If you follow us on the MichiganInsider.com, you should be well aware because we've been at the cutting edge of all of these moves uh, that he's made. Uh, but the criteria that I think is going into it is really, really interesting. And we'll hey, get Sam, into that. Stuff. When something is super true, the kids today, they started off by saying no cap, and then they said a sentence. You know what I mean? And then they probably followed up with another no cap, right? So li listen, listen to this. No <laughs> cap, it don't matter who the defensive line coach is. <laughs> it don't matter. I'm just telling got, you. Hey, man, I ain't said, no big defensive line guy. I can right? go coach them up, and they're going to be one of the hey, best man, in the league. Check this out. So you expect that we would be talking about Mason and KG. They said nobody has blocked Josiah Stewart in practice yet. He's a grown mm. man. Yeah, he hasn't been blocked yet. It's like, man, he like Elm is Doomerville up in here. He's like, what's my man that used to play for you? You could have told sure. somebody that people know, but okay. Oh, well, that's how I, tall, I, I tall was Elm is Doomerville. Five like, nine. Ten. Like six, like six one, six one, six. six, one. six two. <laughs> my, man, my man Dwight Freeney was shorter, right? So they Dwight Freeney. Girl, give me Dwight Freeney. I'll take Dwight Freeney. Was Freeney. They played at the same time. What are we talking about? Dwight how tall was Freeney? He's about six foot. You That's said, I I said Shante Orr. Too. Somebody said Shante Orr. Shante Orr is one of them six one pass rushers. Didn't he have like six sacks versus Michigan State that year? That no cap. I'm coaching the D line this year, and they're gonna be just fine. <laughs> like anybody could do it. That's why everybody like, hey, give me that job, right? <laughs> everybody <laughs> like, hey, uh, I heard y'all looking for a D line coach. <laughs> right? yeah, Daniel put like, his resume uh, in. Daniel said, I mean. You know what I mean? Hey, I can coach Mason Graham and uh, Kenneth Grant too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, just hit the one in front of you. Hey, hey, hey make sure make sure you don't let them through right there. You just yeah, do that. 
Yeah, it ain't even just them, though. Like I said, I mean, Derek Moore and and Josiah Stewart, second year in the program. Like, from a pass rush perspective, you could say those guys were like 1 and 1A one with the dude with the seniors in front of them in, uh, in, in Jalen Harrell and uh, – and my man Braden McGregor. Yeah, I but, mean, I agree, man. It, it, that wasn't – I didn't look ever look at those edge rushers as like, oh, that's our starter. It's like, no, this, those are guys. Like, they just shuffle in, and, and you don't miss a beat when, when, when one or the other is out of the game. Yeah, the, the, the difference was when they did that stand-up stuff. Now, Jalen and Braden definitely had that. They, they definitely were better at that part of it. You know the 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 zone drops and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, 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 the youngsters were looking a little lost when. <laughs> but when we get out to that passer, right? Yeah, we're gonna, no we gonna bench press the the offensive tackle into the backfield, into yeah. the into Jalen Milrow. <laughs> that was Josiah Stewart, man. So, but Lord. I think they'll have the stand up stuff now too. This year, the only question about the defense and the defensive line is is depth. Depth that on the back end was dealt a blow with, with Rob Moore. Man, really that's heartbreaking, man. You already know I'm a big fan of Rob Moore. Yeah, man. man I we, we gotta send some love and some shot and a shout out to Rod. Let, we'll we'll come back. Let's come back. He could have went and become a pro. Yeah, he could have. He I want to come yeah. back around to that, talk about spring ball and spring practice. But right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get to the portion of the show where we talk about our experience. You know, listen, fellas, we shot. I want to say we had like 12 hours of footage to chop down. And so what winds up happening when you got 12 hours of footage, you you condense it and it's still long. So the first cut of the Maya and Arbor episode, fellas, it was, man, it was an hour and 38 minutes long. Jeez. I knew that was too. Yeah, I knew that was too long. So I said, listen, I'm just going to I'm just going to skip to all my parts. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's too long. We got to do something different. We got to we got to narrow it down. So I wound up getting it down to an hour and eight minutes. That was okay. still a little too long. So then we wound up chopping it down to now it's about a 32 minute episode. I can watch 32 minutes. now. Yeah, which is which is where we want to be. 32 it's, minutes of DG in the chat. Let us know. Can y'all watch 32 the, minutes of DG? You cut out the Foley, right? You cut out the Foley, right? I did not cut out the Foley. I did not cut out the Foley. I Daniel, just, whose side are you on? <laughs> I did not cut out the bowling, but I was we'll able. Cut out my, my 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 masterpiece. We we cut out all the smack talk. We cut you out all the him nice talking. Girls, bro. Yeah, all that stuff where he was talking about. Yeah, I you know I'm the best. And <laughs> hey, the thing he, is, no yeah. cap, no cap. They can infer that. They don't need that. They know what's hey, up. They know a, what hey, I was saying. I'm, they know. I'm they a, can they can just think of their best trash talk and they can just throw it in themselves. Yeah, hey, I'm gonna give you your flowers, brother. One of them times I just knew you was gonna airmail it, and you threw a frozen rope and hit one pin. And I was like, Yeah, he played quarterback. I will say this though, my arm felt terrible for the next week. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> I don't really throw that much no more, you know. And I don't know about me going to folding a lot because if I'm competing, I'm really gonna throw, and and you know, it takes a lot out of me, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know. All right. Well, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you a snippet as we get into our our I love Ann Arbor feature. Ben's hey, not hey, here. Sam, Sam, Ben's Sam. Not here. I don't have a track. I don't have a track. You so you track. I don't have a track. Ben has the track. Man. And Ben is out today. Ben is out today. <laughs> so I don't have the track to drop for you. <laughs> I don't have a track to drop for you, man. So because I don't have a track to drop for you. We're just going to go right into it and let you know that when you visit Ann Arbor, your tour guide to all things Ann Arbor are our friends at Destination Ann Arbor. You can find them at annarbor.org. That's annarbor.org. So when you're visiting Washtenaw County, places to go, places to eat, places to stay, events coming to town, Destination Ann Arbor is your tour guide. We'll give you the QR code coming up. But one of the things that they came up with is a novel concept. It's like, listen. We say we're your tour guides to Ann Arbor. How about we connect with student athletes and let the student athletes in an NIL capacity be your tour guides around Ann Arbor? That's how Will Johnson got hooked up with Destination Ann Arbor, taking people around his five of his favorite places in Washtenaw County, 
We, we also said, hey, well, the Dropping Dimes crew would do the same. We would take folks around to five of our favorite spots here in Ann Arbor. Yeah, even and though so, me and Daniel are no longer students or athletes. Yeah, but but you but you're royalty. Like we got to hang with the superstars. You'll hear me say uh, that here you go. at the beginning of this video. So here is a snippet of the condensed version. This is a speech. So I'm gonna give you a, a, a little bit at the beginning and then I'm gonna fast forward at the end so you can hear us talk about Golden Limo, another great sponsor of Dropping Dimes and my Ann Arbor. So I'm gonna bring it to you right now. Right. Here it is a cut from episode two of My Ann Arbor, brought to you by Destination Ann Arbor. The dime. Dropping dimes crew. The dropping dimes crew heading out on the road. My Ann Arbor. We here. We get a chance to hang with the superstars. I can't believe the super, it. The superstars. I the superstars. <laughs> And we're riding on Golden Limo. What's your name? Jackson. Jackson. Well, my man. Good to see you, Jackson. My man, Jackson. That's right. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Okay. I'll, I'll tell y'all. Ooh. Yes, sir. Ooh. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Still got some athleticism there. I don't know. I don't know. All right. <laughs> Let's go in the world famous brown jug here. Brown jug. You know, see me. A brown jug. Pictures all over the place. That one in. This is the coolest one up here. That was uh, Jim Harbaugh when he was still with the 49ers. We all, they, he came to work out, Denar Robinson and Jordan Kovacs. And we all went to go eat afterward here at the Brown Jug. Took that picture way before he became a coach here. It's pretty cool. That's pretty Max cool. right here, me, Denard, Shane Morris. Came back for a quarterback camp to help out. Right, let's jump ahead. Someone like you is out there throwing a football around, accidentally knocks down some pins, and everybody kind of looked around and went, hey, this is fun, man. And so they. They started throwing the ball back and forth, knocking down pins, coming up with the rules, and by the end of the weekend, they figured out all the rules to following. That they did. <laughs> that had to uh, hurt. Did that hurt? That not looking good, Sam. Around pretty fast. <laughs> that is, that is heavy. Hey, Sam, that was such a bad throw and went through the thing. Sam's sick of getting his butt whooped. Get us started, Sarah. Get us started. All right, and so the night is over and we rolled on golden. We got to where we needed to get every time on time and along the way. And it was just this seamless experience that we didn't have to think about whether it was we were gonna get there on time, we didn't have to think about whether it was safe. Absolutely, absolutely. I was happy to do it. All right, so listen. As Devin said, as you heard Daniel say, if you, have ground, if you have ground transportation needs and you're in Southeast Michigan, or if you're traveling elsewhere, you book a flight from Detroit Metro Airport and you're heading to LA, you need to get picked up at the airport, Golden can book your trip all the way to the airport. When you land in LA, you'll have your transportation picking you up and the same thing in reverse. That is the Golden Indifference. Excellence, the Golden Experience. You can find them at goldenlimo.com. Oh. How are you? I don't know about you, but when I want to travel, whether it be abroad or around Ann Arbor, I use Golden Limo. There is no other transportation like it. I know you have those other services that you might use, but if you're smart and you want to ride around in luxury, you should get on Golden Limo. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. It's good. Cut. That's a cut. <laughs> I'm serious. Right. I meant that. I meant that. <laughs> hey, so listen, listen. And they accommodate all your bathroom needs if you need to stop at the at, at a restaurant. Not saying that you know what happened to me, but I'm saying if you need to stop and use the bathroom abruptly, you, and you still get where you need to go on time. That's good. Yeah. So listen, I know you got a you got a jet here real quick, Daniel. 
So I appreciate your time. Uh, we will get you next week because we, we're going to talk a little football. We're going to talk. We're going to send a shout out to Ice Cube before we get out of here. So hey, appreciate you, my brother. Only thing I got to say is in the famous words of Devin Gardner, there's some brown in that jug. <laughs> no, you didn't. That was a tweet. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, Day was not on our side. Hey, you stop laughing so side. hard, Sam. You better you stop laughing so hard. Hey, so I gotta be able to tell the story. I gotta man, be able to tell the story. You told the story. You told the story about how you beat us down. You beat us down with the pins, right? You beat us down in foley. Well, before we went to the folding people, we were over at the brown jug. This part didn't make the video. Hold on. Just it let me make, breathe for a second. It, it, it didn't make the video. We kept it out of the video because you got to keep it real professional, right? This is a this is a paid segment. You know, Dropping Dimes wants to use this promotional materials. You're trying to, you know, promote Washington County. We get it. But the brown jug portion of it, Devin Gardner disappeared for a good 25, oh, 35, 20. 25, 35 minutes. Right, we didn't know where Devin was. Like, where is Devin? What's going on with Devin? I mean, he's holding up the whole shoot. Right. Oh, Next man. thing you know, Devin comes sauntering out, looking like a load has been lifted, <laughs> looking like a pepper's in his step, looking like he's floating on air. I'm like, oh, wow, Devin, what the hell happened? You look like a new man. He said, "Well, we in the brown jug. I definitely left some brown in that jug." <laughs> That's not what that that wasn't how you're supposed to promote the brown jug. That's I was doing a cleanse, man. I was doing a cleanse. <laughs> but, uh, uh, people, oh. since we're here, I'm gonna tell you the funniest part. You guys here drop it. I'm gonna drop one dime for you. And it didn't you make the show. You drop one. We, you we had sound music. guys, right? So we had one sound guy who had <laughs> all of our mics are connected to the sound guy, so he can hear he can hear everything. And so when I went to go put that brown in that jug. I forgot to turn my mic off. <laughs> I forgot to turn my mic off. And I forgot his what was his name, Sam? His name was Kyle. Kyle, I, I want to apologize again. Because you didn't deserve that. You did nothing to deserve the sound effects that you heard in the, the I I eventually I remember, oh I got my I, you know I turned it off. But uh the initial brown in that jug, Kyle heard it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So none, of that, none of that is in the episode. I promise you. Yeah, there. It was yeah, funny. Either. It was funny enough to be on there, but you know, we it's about promoting the great spots in NRI. I suppose we could have been promoting the great facilities over at the Brown Jug, right? That's important too. But that wasn't a part of the shoot menu, so we decided to leave that out. Oh, one more time. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, you know, didn't mean it. It's on me. I'm a, I'm a professional. I should have known. My bad. <laughs> So, folks, listen, when you are visiting Washtenaw County or if you live in Washtenaw County, I want you to know your tour guide to all things Ann Arbor, our friends at Destination Ann Arbor. You can find them at annarbor.org, right? You can also scan this QR code. That is also, that's another way in which you can Partake in all the things that are coming to Washtenaw County, places to stay, places to eat, events coming to town. Your tour guide to all things Washtenaw County, our friends at Destination Ann Arbor. So be sure to check them out. Folks who live here don't even know about a lot of the places that we have gone to and are going to go to as part of our My Ann Arbor tour. So like like sure. the trails that Sam allegedly rides on. And no allegedly to it, brother. Hey, man, I, I, I get on the bike trail. I throw on my J. Cole. Next thing you know, man, I, that's how I made it up that mountain. Made it up that mountain, man. I was listening to, I, I think I was listening to 24, uh, Forest Hills Drive. I think I was listening to that. That's, that that's one to listen to for sure. Hey, man, it's outstanding to listen to. So anyway, be sure. And now I'm actually going to get on the, tra on the trail with, with a GoPro so I can prove to you that I was actually doing it. Check out. All the things that are happening. Hey, Sam, in I gotta tell you, I, I remember I told you I've been working out, man. Today, after the workout, right? I just wanted to see where I was. You know, I put two thirty-five on that bar ten times, man. After the workout, I'm already gassed. Okay, two thirty-five for ten, baby. 
Come on. Okay, so we're gonna we gonna have to uh put that to the test. We're gonna give you we're gonna give you some time. And see, you said you can do it right here on this episode. Hold on, don't time. give me too much time because I'm on, uh, I'm, you know, once I, I've hit a mark, I might get weaker from here. But I'm telling you today, <laughs> early today, it's on the internet. It's on the internet. So I don't need, it ain't no problem. Wait, 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 wait. So, it's so on the internet. Current Devin Gardner put 235 up 10 times is on the internet. At the end of the workout, 235 for 10. When did this happen? When? Where's this video? At about 11.30. I'll send you right now. You don't get on Instagram now. You, I thought you was going to start being more active since we taught you, but you haven't, you know, so I'll send to you right now. Okay, okay. All right, young fella. Still younger fella than me. We'll, we'll see. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's we're right. Gonna it, we're going to put it to the test coming up. Listen, right. wanted to get a little spring ball talk in. Uh, we actually talked a little bit about some of the things that we were hearing. Uh, but people want to know about what's going on with the D-line coaching search. We know the unfortunate circumstance. Man, it's just a, a couple of weeks of just bad news. First is the, the Greg Scruggs news. Um, had the OWI incident that uh, was uh, ultimately led to his resignation from Michigan. And then, of course, as we touched on before we went to the I Love Ann Arbor segment, uh, the news about Rod Moore, who, man, it just feel like the football guys just got it in from a man, Rod. Man. Can't catch a break. He... He had designs on being three and out last year, uh, but he got hurt before the season and wound up missing the first three games. Came back in that Rutgers game. You remember, he wasn't 100%. Remember that angle he took on, on the dude, and the dude went to the house. You could tell that was just rust. Mm -hmm. It took him a while to knock the rust off, and he didn't have the kind of season that was conducive to jump in. Yeah, to jump in the, in the draft. So he came back for his senior year. And it's like, man, I heard it was a non-contact injury last Sunday. You know, he went down and and you could, t I mean, everybody was was nervous, but they were, they wanted to keep a positive outlook because let's wait for an MRI. They said they couldn't feel it. Like they you kind of feel around for an ACL. Yeah. You couldn't feel. You could kind of feel the looseness of it when, right. when you, yeah. Right. And they said they couldn't feel that. So they were hopeful that it wouldn't be an ACL tear and then. MRI, MRI must have come back. I just I asked uh, it was Matt Zenich from 24-7 Sports put out there that he has a torn ACL and I called around and asked uh, a few different guys. They were like, Yeah, it's true. So I, that means they got the MRI back. And he's uh six to eight months is the recovery now. So, you know, if it's on the six month end of a DG, that gets you back middle of Big Ten play. Yeah. Allows you to get get a lather, get your get your football. And, you know, in today's age, man, people are coming back faster and stronger than ever from a lot of different injuries that we thought were not only not only season enders, but career enders, you know. So uh, who knows, right? Prayers up that, that Rob Moore can come back and, and, and be at full strength and, and play well. But it was devastating when I saw that. I said, what is going on? Man, but. Prayers up for Rod Moore, as you know. My, my, you know, I'm, I, I love the guy. I think he's a great player. Never talked to him before or anything like that. But from his freshman year, getting out in that fire on, on such a talented defense and being able to contribute, I, I was super impressed with with him. And um, man, it, I think he was poised for an outstanding season. Yeah, me too. Feel for the for the young fella. And here's what I know about him. Uh, student of the game, going to impart some of that wisdom on those young guys. That was the difference mm -hmm. in Rod getting on the field as a freshman. Rob Moore, Rob Moore and Will Johnson are two young players, two young defenders who it really stands out to me how, how veteran-like they were in their preparation. Mm -hmm. Like those dudes lived in the playbook, and it was a big difference between them and some of their teammates, and that's not to be critical of, course, of, of course. their teammates. The teammates were just more freshman like. Yeah, and you know the thing is, I think those two guys, and I don't know this for a fact, but I, I believe that those two guys got in that hip pocket of a Mikey Samuel Steel, right? Because you know, watching Samuel Steel kind of navigate on the field and 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 co communicate the way he did, it, like defense is getting harder and harder, man. Because these offenses are doing shifts and motions, and they have so many different multiple sets and different things like that. It's tough to understand and have an understanding what the adjustments are. And, and Mikey Samuels still was a guy that understood that, which is why he can go from wide receiver and, and go and contribute on, on defense and become a great player for the University of Michigan. So 
Uh, I'm sure that Ron Moore will be that type of asset for young guys coming in right now and guys who have to replace some of his uh, production. Yeah, I mean, I, I, devastating, man. I want to see him play this year, man. Yeah, I think he I think he will. I think he will. Um, he'll come back. And, and like I said, you hope it's closer to the six-month side of it. That way he has a chance to get himself together for the November run. You know, for, for, for Rod, for all, them play, all the players, it's like Ohio State, but for him especially, being from Ohio. Of and, course. And it being so personal to him, if he can be back balling by Ohio State, I think he would take that at this point. But mm-hmm. like you said, prayers up, really feeling for him. One of the better dudes that you know, just a really super good dude. That's what it seems like. like. That's what it seems like. Yeah, you feel like he's going to be able to help those those players who who need to get some of what he has from a preparation standpoint. Opportunities in front of you now if you're Brandon Hillman. Opportunities in front of you now if you're Zeke Berry. Opportunities in front of you now if you're Jaden McBurrows. Is it an opportunity to transfer back? <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dream, dream ball hey, up. Open. Uh, you was worried about playing time, man. Yeah, it's happened already. It's I happened. It's- how about that? And how I about see- hey? How about you give me a hundred thousand to come here for a couple months, and I'm gonna head on back. <laughs> long as there's no stipulation in the contract to say you got to pay that buddy back. Yeah, which these dudes got no stipulations. Yeah, these dudes got to worry about. But that's not the last guy. Remember, I said this. That's not the I last. Caleb Downs going back to Alabama. Yeah, you're not going to see – what? You think so? Caleb Downs then removed Ohio State from his bio. You know, really? that's how you find stuff up with the kids. You look at their bio. It, it don't say yeah, Ohio State no so- more. I got a few sources down at Bama that are like, I don't know if that's – I don't know. It, I don't it, know about that. Well, I don't know if he's going – maybe not going back to Bama, but is there somewhere else that he like, ah, well, here's the I thing. don't love it here. Word, I can when he went in the portal, around. it was that he was going to go to Georgia. Okay. That was the word. And when Ohio State came in, the guy was like, well, how the hell that happened? Hey, hey, and when so somebody maybe, asked me that, I said, what you mean, how the hell that happened? Maybe, maybe, about hell to pull that Proctor. Happened. maybe about to pull a Proctor and head on over to Georgia where he wanted to go in the first place. I don't know. Yeah, don't but Ohio know. State is out of his bio. It used to be. It ain't in there no more. The internet tells everything. Okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. We shall see. I'm just telling you, that's not the last time that we saw, we, we have, we, we will have seen a guy transfer somewhere in the winter and then right after the spring transfer somewhere else probably right back to the place he came from just remember <laughs> i said that all right uh but the focus on d-line coach to find a replacement for for uh greg scruggs i pointed out several names um in a uh one of my three-hour reports over on the michiganinsider.com a few days ago but i mentioned two names at the top you want to read the whole list, go for it. But the two names at the top I mentioned were one was a name that I, I mentioned previously along with Greg Scruggs. I said, Greg Scruggs, number one on the list. Number two on the list is a dude named Terrence Jameson. You might remember Tim Jameson playing yes. at the University of Michigan. Yes. Well, his brother, Terrence Jameson, D line coach at Illinois, said, you know, he's a guy that Michigan was. was he's got a Walter Camp All American. Hey, man. Jerzon Newton. Monster. Adam, Adam, a few times, Illinois, and man, that boy can play. He's a monster. He can go. I think he's going to be a first round pick. They, you talk uh, to coaches, you talk to scouts, you talk to agents. They like, man, that dude, you know, and, and he, he's got a motor, he's violent hands, heavy. You know, when you talk about D line, you always talk about heavy hands, right? And that's something that can be learned. Some people just have it. And, you know, I wouldn't be, I would, I would be okay with giving, you know, coach the credit for helping develop him into the type of player he's become. Yeah, he's had a lot of dudes. He had Carl Loftus at Purdue. Like, he yep. had a lot of those dudes yep. at Purdue as well. Like, Terrence Jameson has coached some guys. And as we were making a comparison with Greg Scruggs, it was like Greg was was a good coach and a really good recruiter. And Terrence was a good recruiter and a really good coach. So both of them could check both boxes, but one of them checked more of one box than the other. It was kind of mm-hmm. what, the, what the conversation was. And But, but Greg had the added – bonus of he knew Sharon. He had played at Louisville when Sharon was was on staff there. You have Vance who was also the defensive coordinator at that time. You had a lot of people, um, a lot of elements sort of boosting his status. Yeah. I think a similar thing is at play 
for the guy that I represented at number one on the list. The guy that I mentioned last week now was a guy at Memphis named Lou Esposito. He okay. is the co-defensive coordinator and D-line coach at Memphis. He was the defensive coordinator at Western for, what is it, about seven years. In between that, he started the football program at Davenport at the head co- as a head coach. At that time, he had a dude named Steve Casula on staff with him ah. as one of his coaches. He had also coached with Steve, Steve Casula at Western a couple of years before that when he was only the D-line coach. I think it was from 2010 to 2012 or something like that. Casula was on staff with Lou Esposito at that time. So Lou has had a bunch of, of pros that he brought up at West Virginia. Inclu- I'm not West, Western Michigan, including – my man at Florida State that blew up at the combine. What's my man's name? Uh, yeah, Florida State has some dudes, man. Yeah, he blew it up at the combine. Oh man, I got to get his name. This was a miracle. Of Google uh, did his thing. Braden Fisk. He oh, yeah. killed it at the combine. He was like six, very impressive. Four, uh, four seven in the forty. That dude was a portal guy from Western Michigan. He was a Lou Esposito guy. Lou can really recruit. I mean, my man Alan True was all over that, right? He has coordinator experience. Uh, he knows the footprint, but he's from Memphis. And I think the thing that really boosts him is I, I can really sense how much Sharon values the chemistry of the staff, yeah, the cohesion of the staff. And when you got a guy on your staff that has worked with an individual, that can tell you, man, this dude would be a great fit for us. I think that carries a lot of weight. And one of the reasons why I've been pumping, I think he's number one on the list. Now, you know, he just got to Memphis. So, you know, there's probably some hurdles. That ain't, no, uh, no. Remember, we had a coach that just got to Michigan and said, ah, Buffalo wants me to be the head coach. I'm out. Yeah, yeah, sure did. It's a business, man. It's a business. Uh, and, hey, man, and I- hey. Hey, and honestly, about- the fact that he just got there makes it even more likely that he could leave. Because it's like, I don't know y'all like that anyway. Right. All right. And, and Dan Enos, man. Dan Enos is on campus for two oh, Danny. weeks. Danny. He was Danny like, I'm, I'm out. out. <laughs> I'm out, man. I'm about it, right? So mm-hmm. I'm not saying it can't be done, but I'm saying that there, there are hurdles that you have to get over and, and through in order to get that done. But I'm telling y'all, I'm not just – you know, you know me. I don't just throw stuff out there. I haven't missed on any of this coaching stuff, not one time. Sam, I'm, when, I'm the way time. you – I was just listening to your soliloquy, and I'm just – all I'm thinking is, man, this, this man Sam know a lot, man. Like, <laughs> why do you know so much? I'm like, this man – oh, because he don't sleep. It's like, do you even go – do you eat? Do you go home? He got a little refrigerator right there. Uh, y'all can't see it right now, but he got some uptime in there. Pro- the man don't sleep. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, hey, man, let's wait to see. I mean, there are other guys that are on the list. Somebody said, what about Roach at Alabama? I mean, he was on the list. But Freddie Roach, is a he's a he's a Bama alum. He's a alum. And, that's, and he was made, uh, Kayla made him the associate head coach. Like, you aren't pulling that dude. I mean, you can kick the tires. Kick the tires, but you aren't pulling that dude. That's not happening. So I mean, I'm telling you, hey, his workload gonna be a lot lighter with some with this D line. You know, <laughs> you to, do much. to me, to me, Lou Esposito is the favorite. He's the right. strong favorite. Um, we'll see if it if it happens. If it doesn't, sometimes you got to pivot. Sometimes your number one guy for whatever reason, you can't close the deal and you got to go in another direction, right? And so, like, kind of like Steve Adagoke. Steve Adagoke had actually taken the job when that one went left. So. Uh, this one hasn't gotten quite that far yet, but he's the favorite. He's the favorite. So, uh, at any rate, DG, before we get out of here, I got to get your thoughts on this, man. And I wish we had uh, quarterbacks to get his two things. Okay, two things. Number one, I remember all these Buckeyes killing me for saying the number one quarterback in the draft is JJ McCarthy. Now it's a lot of people starting to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, Dan Orlovsky. When they said, who is the quarterback most ready to hit the ground running in the NFL right now based on the system he ran, the responsibilities he had at the line of scrimmage, changing plays, changing protections, all of that, and he's a ball player and he's athletic. Dan Olofsky said the most pro-ready quarterback in this draft. 
is J.J. McCarthy. Daniel Daniel was, was like, are you sure? I was like, yeah. I said, go ask DG. And DG said. Listen, man. First, Firstly, you talking about people getting mad at you saying he, you the be, he the best quarterback in draft. People was mad at me when I said he should be the quarterback over K. McNamara. Looking at me like I'm crazy. Like, I don't know ball. Like, I can't see a talent that can help a team win a national championship. But I digress. Um, you, You're not the only one, Sam. Uh, I have a lot of circles, right? Obviously, I work with, you know, Lee Levin and different. Uh, I, I've come across a lot of, the, you know, Q, QB gurus and people. Did, everybody is looking at me crazy. And so my question to them it usually is, okay, say I can see where this is coming from of like either you're a hater or you just don't respect my football knowledge and me watching the film because you can't possibly watch all of his tape and, and say that he's, a, that he's not a first-round pick. And and in this draft, definitely a top five, right? Or or that's just in my opinion. And my rebuttal is, well, is everybody wrong now? Because I mean, I'm not. I, I've already. I, I this was two years. What was it? Two or three years ago, I said this is gonna be a first round talent. Am I, yeah. that I, did I, is that me that said that? Yeah. So of course I had to get hit on the head with all this cave. Hey, he turns them all blah 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 now that the executives who get paid millions of dollars to do it, all the scouts that get paid millions of dollars to do it, all the analysts and, and whoever that make a lot more money than me get paid to do it, now they are jumping on and saying. So now my question to those people who are, you know, the, the not, and, 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 and let me preface this by saying there are plenty of guys who don't work out, right? But until that, ha first of all, I haven't missed. I've been right on from, from the jump. Am I lying? I've been no. right on for that. Yeah. My question to them when I have these conversations is, well, is everybody wrong now? Because I maybe I, do I deserve a raise? Because uh, uh, Antoine Josh said, oh, you need to be you need to be an analyst and recruiter for the university. I, I, you can see talent when it's you know what I mean. It's well, just I like, mean, I just I well, I didn't miss. Wait, let me pat myself on the back. I remember like three years ago saying somebody need to fire Reggie Bush. And put Devin Gardner in because Devin Bam, actually knows. You are ball. getting off topic. You're getting off topic. Well, we 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 kind of patting ourselves on the back right now about what we did. Uh, ago, I'm right? not listen, listen. You say, man. You say I just you my question to, to all the people who can't who are just so confused and Devin, you were wrong. You he shouldn't have been starting over K McNamara, blah, blah, blah. He should, you know, whatever. Is everybody now wrong? So I got a question for you because I know you do Elite 11. and It and, seems like everybody's wrong now. Yeah, and I know there's, you know, there are other quarterback gurus over there. I'm curious, what, what did Jordan Palmer think of J.J.'s rise? Did you happen to talk to Jordan Palmer at all? I haven't talked to Jordan about J.J.'s rise since. You haven't? Yeah, I, I just haven't. And so, I don't know. I, 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 I can imagine what he thinks. And I can imagine that he's trying to put as many seeds in the ear. You know, hey, he's not the, you know, but I, I can't say, I can only imagine, I can't say what he thinks of this rise of a guy who he didn't even think should be starting over K McNamara and the, the team would falter completely and, and, and it wouldn't be much, even though, you know, they go 15 and 0 and win the championship. But I, I do not know what Jordan Palmer's thinking or saying right now. I can only imagine. <laughs> All right. Hey, man. I know that if J.J., I think if he had his pick, I think he would have the Minnesota Vikings straight up to get him. Man, because right, you're going to a good team. That team is not a bad sure. team. I, they, sure. they, they're in a position where they – it's almost – thick. I kind of liken it to the Cowboys. And, and maybe not as good a roster, but a pretty good roster. Remember, the Cowboys, they get – they first of all, they have a really high pick because Tony Romo gets hurt, right? Or, or whatever the case may be. They have a high, very high pick. They pick – uh Ezekiel Elliott, right? And then they get Dak, who comes into a situation with an outstanding team, right? Mm -hmm. So you got a chance to develop, right? You don't have to be called on to win right away. And so being able to be a top five quarterback and go to a good team is a luxury that people do not understand. Because I don't know if it was me and you talking or whoever, but I was kind of saying like, man, it would be great for him to fall to a to the 20s, right? 15s. And, you know, obviously the money would be different, but as far as your long-term success, it's much better for you because now you can lean on other pieces around you to be successful. But if you go to the Vikings, uh, an offensive-minded coach that is very quarterback-friendly, he won a game with a guy who got there a week ago. <laughs> he did.
two days, two or three days before, right? But all and he so, had to do was throw it up to Justin Jefferson, though. And, and then you got a you got pieces. You've got pieces that you can definitely rely on, and that's something that we didn't see for JJ McCarthy at Michigan. As as much as you know, we love Ro- Roman Wilson and all the talented wide receivers. He didn't have a guy where it's like it don't matter what they do. It don't yeah. matter. Right, so you got offensive mind, you got a guy, and obviously all the other pieces around. I just, I just think it's the perfect situation for him. And if, and if he would have his pick, like you said, I think that he would say, "Man, I don't care how y'all do it, I want to play for the Vikings." Hey, man, they said they the Vikings were hawking him, like you wouldn't believe. At to the, the point where you know, a lot of a lot of schools watch at uh-huh. the combine, but man, they were like all over JJ, okay, at all, the, at the all over Michigan, all over Michigan's coaches. Kind of watching with, like you can tell, like if you're watching the dude with the coaches, you can kind of see and hear about them asking, mm-hmm. questions. yeah, man, the Vikings want him bad. But the question is, how high up do they have to go to get him? Like, uh, Jay Marion, appreciate you, appreciate all the love from the people. Who Sam, my laptop got three percent. Okay, we getting off. All you people who are in the in the mix on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter, we love you all. Jay Marion on YouTube, this is a pipe dream, brother. He is not it, falling to thirteen. No, no, no. I hope not. And so for me, uh, we, I wanted to get into, you know, spring ball, but I'm going to go to practice. Sam, we talked about it off here. I'm going to go to okay. practice. And next week, Wednesday, we're going to talk about the quarterbacks at the University of Michigan and, and you know, what it looks like. And uh, I'll give you my analysis on that. I got some good stuff right now, but we don't have, you know, my laptop's about to die yeah. and all that. Yeah. But I, I love the improvement from, from Denigo. And, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it next week. So make sure you're here Wednesday at 6. Wednesday right. at 6. Wednesday at 6, that is the permanent time, so be sure to lock it in, and we will talk about that. We'll also get into the Caitlin Clark getting the big three offer yeah. from Ice Cube, $5 million. That is a landmark offer that maybe is going to change some things as far as pay scale is concerned. Maybe it'll maybe it'll get some more women, some more opportunities over in the big three, because I think that's going to get enough headlines. Mm-hmm. That it might make them want to do it even more. And WNBA salary is only 200000 They could do both. Uh, but I think Q might be on to something with this. Mm-hmm. So we'll get into that next week as well. Be sure to check us out there. And as always, folks, we love it when you let us drop dimes on you. So be back next week for more Steady Dropping Dimes. We'll see you then.